Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, this is Car Addict. Uh, my plans for the day changed, as they always do. Um, I actually went and bought a power inverter so I could keep my laptop going in the car because I intended to go out and tune my boost levels again because, as they say, spinning ain't winning, and all I do in first and second is spin. So um, I need to lower my boost by gear a little bit because, like, on the street, I can barely get stock-like numbers because from 0 to 50, 0 to 60, all I do is spin. So it's ridiculous to be trying to put that much power to the ground with an open diff all seasons on asphalt. It's, or at least this asphalt. It just doesn't work. So my car is actually slower than it would be with less boost right now. So i got to turn it down, and I meant to go out and do that, lower the boost a little bit, Go out and try it. Lower the boost a little. Go out and try it. Oh, no, by the way, you can't do that because I'm going to rain. So, uh, switch gears a little bit, and I'm going to go over my flex fuel setup because I just changed it. So, um, I, well, I modified it a little bit. I changed my fuel line. I didn't like that factory line cut with the barb fittings. It does turn your fuel line into only costing $11 instead of like $100, but... They didn't leak, so it, not really an issue, but looks-wise, it didn't look as good. And um, you have to, like, at least I had to use a heat gun to warm the line, because it's actually a hard line inside of that rubber. It's not a rubber line. So you have to warm it up so you can jam the barb fittings in. And then I almost kinked it, because I had a hard line heated up to be soft to get the barbs in. I almost kinked it, shoving the barb in. And it, it just... I don't know. I didn't like it. So, change it to AN fittings and lines, and I'll go over it real quick and show you. And uh, I'll just go over everything I got again real quick with pricing in case you haven't seen the last video I did of my flex fuel setup. Then I'll show you my fuel line, the way I did it. And I got all these fittings from one person. So that's why I have these fittings. And I made the line this way. Then I'll show you if I was buying fitting by fitting one by one and choosing how I'd set it up, I'll show you how I would set the line up like that. Alright, so anyways, let's get to it. Alright, and since I still don't have my um, external microphone, and I'm using the one built in, I'm going to try my best to minimize any sound of my fingers rubbing, apro rubbing across the GoPro, but here we go. Um, and then also, i got to show you something under the fuse box, because... Here's the deal. I'm going to assume most of you do not have your converter on switch to 12 volt like uh, K-Tuner says to do. So let's do a quick rundown of the setup I got, the pricing, and then I'll show you the uh, issue I bet you have, and I'll show you my fuel line. All right. That's one of the crucial components of it is the converter. Uh, it's about 100 bucks direct from K-Tuner. I forget if you pay shipping or tax. Um, so it might be 115 shipped, I don't know. All right, so it needs ground, power, and input, and then it's got an output. So power and ground, obvious. Input comes from the flex fuel sender, which I have right here. Now mine is a Continental branded uh, on Amazon for like 40 bucks, so it could be a knockoff. But every time I test my fuel, it's within 1% uh, basically of the readout on the K2. I mean the K2 or V2. So for now, it's accurate, and long-term reliability is still up in the air. But I bought the pigtail for it, a six-foot wire and plug for 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll link that. And I was able to use the output wire and cut five feet off of it and just use the short little run to here so I could use the other five feet to run the signal output of this uh, converter through this loom. And it comes down here, probably somewhere back right there. You take the ECT2 plug out, which I believe is blue or black. It's not the same color in everybody's car. But um, you take the bottom pan off, reach up in there, and it's the only plug right there about the side of the radiator area. Uh, pretty much the only plug you're going to get to. All right, and I tried to just find the plug so I could show you, but um, can't find the extras I bought. So... Thanks to DC2 Turbo, I think that's his username on CivicX.com, there is a plug available for three bucks online, so it's about ten bucks shipped that you have to file the little ribs off of. I think there's four of them, and then it'll plug right in. So get that plug because it's hell to try to get under there and splice wiring because you can't reach up in there very well because well, it's a cramped area. 
and then if you file the ribs off and you unplug something and that thing doesn't plug in, there's another hint that you're wrong. But you shouldn't really be able to miss what you're looking for. Um, uh, now, after you get that done, I have the power and ground from the sensor and the power and ground from the converter tied together at that pigtail. And then I got the power and ground coming over here behind the battery box coming out right here. I originally had it coming from the reverse switch and the ground right here because this is uh, switched. But I didn't like the look of it coming out right there and wanted to get it in here and fused. So I came right here and then I got the ground right there. And for the power, I actually came up through where the battery comes in. There's already a little slot run the wire, but then I had to drill a tiny hole here because if you just try to loop it over you're pinching the wire pretty bad because the lid has a groove that goes all the way around with a gasket to seal off this area. Brought the wire in, came over here to this add a fuse. Now, I've heard a lot of people talking about they're going to their headlights. So in my car anyways, my high beams are constant. Those 12 volt uh, circuits right there are always 12 volts. They're never not. My low beams are only 12 volts, not with the ignition, tricked me at first too because I had it off they weren't uh, they didn't have 12 volts turn the car on they have 12 volts but what it was is because my headlights were coming on that's why I checked it with my headlights off they're not 12 volts so if you have yours to your high beams it's constant if you have yours to your low beams it's dependent on your headlights neither one is what you want the only two fuses in here that are switched is that 5 volt let me see. Yes, that 5 volt, and it's. Uh, I didn't choose that one because if I put the block in there, uh, the wiring will interfere with that, so I couldn't get it in. Now the problem I had is wired it up in there, went for a drive, and that fuse is the VBACT, Variable Boost Actuator is what I think it stands for, but it's that wastegate servo motor. So went out for a drive, had no boost, popped the lid, it had popped itself out. So I thought it was because there was tension on the wire, zip tied the wire so it had slack, pushed it back in, went out and drove again. No boost. And let me tell you, this car is a dog without boost. Um, came back, plugged it in again. This time, I put that uh, foam under the lid. You can see the divot. So it holds that in when the lid's on. I'll get a new out of views later and hope it grabs onto it better. Um, maybe they make something specifically for uh, the micro ATC instead of the mini because the ones I have are adapters for minis and uh, the difference being the blades are below the fuse itself on the mini and the micro the blades are on the side of the fuse so maybe the fuse box also somewhat grabs on to the actual body and that's what holds it in better and not just holding on to the blade I don't know either way this doesn't like to stay in so I had to do this for now and get the foam. Hopefully I won't have to later. All right, so now we'll go take a look at the line going to the sensor. This is the way I did it with what I had, and then I'll show you the way I would do it again. All right, so you're always gonna need quarter inch quick disconnect to dash six AN uh, male, or I guess whatever size line you wanna use, but uh, I got dash six. You're gonna need that same fitting here for the other end of the hard line. And then at the sensor, you're going to need two 516 quick disconnects to dash 6AN. Um, at least every sensor I've seen is it's quick disconnect. Maybe they make a sensor somewhere that's already got AN fittings on the aftermarket, but you're probably not getting it for 40 bucks like this one costs. Um, so you're most likely going to be doing this. Now from there, I actually have a 90 degree hose end, with the shortest piece of hose that would work just to make like a direct connection. and then a straight hose end then that quick disconnect okay then down here there's the quick disconnect then I got a female to male uh, 90 a straight hose end then the hose comes up like this and I got it zip tied and for now I want to try to find those fancier brackets that'll like clip to a hose and clip to a hose and they swivel so you can clip those together better but for now zip ties will hold it now the way I would have done it which would be better and make it a little more compact is if I replaced this 90 degree hose end with a 
uh, female to female dash six connector, it would go straight to this fitting, straight to that fitting, and the sensor itself would be mounted right here, uh, much more direct. It wouldn't have as much movement. It could still pivot this way because the uh, quick disconnect fittings are just uh, an O-ring fitting, so they will still uh, swivel. But it'll be mounted here pretty good. And then off of this fitting, I could use a 90 degree hose end, which would come right off the sensor this way. This line would just go right off that from that 90 degree hose fitting right to there. So I'd get rid of that male to female elbow. I'd get rid of this straight hose connector and that straight hose connector because that would be replaced with this one and this would have a straight fitting. So you'd probably save about somewhere between 25 to 35 bucks in fittings probably that way. And if you could get uh, 18 inches of line, 12 inches could be enough. Um, but it would be really pushing it. I don't think 12 inches would be enough. So you might not get away with one foot. You'd have to still buy two, so you won't save money on the line, but save money on the fittings, and it'll just look better, because I think without so many little fittings, like now it just looks like, I don't know. I mean, it looks fine, but it looks like there's just too many different adapters. It looks kind of hokey, like you had to rig stuff together, even though it's not like that. Um, but all together... Still, even after you had to buy the fittings at retail, you're looking at 100, 110, 150, 160, let's say after an add a few, is 170, even though they're not much money. Um, and then with the fittings, you're probably looking at 250 bucks for everything shipped to get it set up like this. And you'll have nice AN lines and be good to go. And 250 is way cheaper than most of the kits out there as far as I know of. Maybe there's kits that aren't so much money, but uh, also I spent about $10 on loom. And I wouldn't get the same kind of loom I have uh, now. I'd get a different kind of loom probably, but that's up to you. I, I do and I don't like what I have. It's kind of a pain in the butt to work with, and when you cut it, you have to melt it or it just frays apart. I, I don't really like it, and I probably won't buy this type of loom ever again, but um... I just wanted something small and compact, but I probably should have just gone with the traditional plastic style and just found a small one like what's on your uh, MAF sensor wiring. Something like that would have been better. But either way, there you go. Uh, you're set up much cheaper. To mount this, all I actually did was take this plate off, which you have to do anyways to get that uh, fitting on there. And then I drilled couple holes which I'll show a picture of in a second and then I just zip tied this on but it stays there pretty securely um, it's not going anywhere right there there just uh, after you drill the holes give it a little spray paint a couple times just so that uh, it's not gonna rust right away all right so like I've said a few times now there you go you can set up your own flex fuel for much cheaper than buying a kit Installation is really easy. The hardest part is getting down there and putting that stupid plug in. If you can get on a lift, it'll be easy with both arms above your head. But if you're laying on the ground and trying to work like this, it sucks. But it's definitely doable. All right. And I've also decided I'm going to start offering an install service. And obviously you're going to want to live in northwest Washington, probably like Snohomish County, North King County, uh... Skagit County maybe, I don't really know exactly what counties are right around me, but um, I'll put a link to my Facebook page uh, so you can message me that way and ask for a quote, uh, because maybe you don't want to, or you don't feel comfortable tackling the job yourself, or you don't think you have all the tools, or you don't want to pay a shop 90 bucks an hour to do it. So, um, things like intake, downpipe, exhaust, springs, brakes, flex fuel, those kinds of things um, I would do, uh, and I'll give you a quote if you ask, but I'm not going to do the clutch, don't ask me, because I haven't even done my own, and I know it's going to take a lot of hours, and the catch is, I cannot stand when people watch me work, not just on cars, on the house, on pretty much everything, at work where you're like, 
uh, actual career where your job is there, or I mean where your boss is there. He might watch you. There's nothing you can say. Um, a lot of times my bosses actually know I can't stand to <laughs> be watched, so they'll come actually check on me, make sure I am working, getting stuff done, and then they'll leave because they know that's the best way to get me to work. Um, so, anyways, uh, you'd have to trust to just bring the car, drop it off, I'll call you when I'm done, and you'll pick it up. So, if you can't trust me, I'm sorry, I guess, but I don't really want to change my opinion on that because I just can't stand when people watch me work. The other thing is, if I'm talking to somebody while I'm working, it doesn't go as fast because I can't focus, and the whole point is to get the car in, get the job done, make the money, get the car out. Um, so, uh, just let me know if you want something done. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. So, for the fifth time, there you go. Uh, budget flex fuel setup. And uh, if you want something done in your car, let me know. Um, I'm going to go find something to do. I will talk to you guys later. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a good day.